Welcome in to the New Orleans Saints podcast, hosted by Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers who cover the team on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your hosts, Aaron Summers and John DeShazer. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers, John DeShazer, and I will have safety Jordan Howden on the podcast today. He was a great guest, really had a lot of fun talking to him. He gives us a lot of detail about his journey to the NFL and how things have been going for him here. Before the Saints game at Texas, they'll be playing the Houston Texans 12 o'clock central time there. You can watch it on Fox. The last injury report of the week came out and there are a couple players that will not be playing. Already ruled out for the game is tight end Jawan Johnson, safety Lonnie Johnson, fullback Adam Prentice, safety JT Gray, and tackle Landon Young. At practice on Friday, we did not see guard Andrews Pete. That was the first time that he was unable to practice this week, and he has been listed as questionable for the game on Sunday. Of course, you can watch our pregame show on NewOrleansSaints.com or on social media and see a full injury report, the latest news as it comes out before game time on Sunday. Now, let's bring in the rookie, Jordan Howden. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us on the New Orleans Saints podcast. How are you? Uh, good, you know, uh, hanging in there, just working. So how are you? I, I'm doing great. You know, we have another week of practice under our belts. How did you feel practice went? Um, I feel like practice went good. Um, of course, there's, there's always some things or some things we have to work on as a defense to make sure that we're all on the same page and uh, see certain for, formations that we think is difficult for us. But for us to get in the film room and get it get it right for that, we can play well on Sunday. So Yeah, well, we're definitely going to talk a lot about you, your NFL career short so far, right. but what you've been able to do. I want to take it back to when you first started. When did you know that you wanted to play football or, or get into it? Um, So... My, like the way I would be, I was growing with, I was growing up with my cousins and my grandma's house. So everybody played a sport, like whether the baseball, basketball, track, football, um, and everybody played for like the same team. But like I was still younger than everybody, so I'll just be around, be at football practice and stuff. So my dad would throw me to football when I was young. Then he got me into flag. Then I got into tackle early. So I was, I used to play with older, older people since I was probably like seven years old. Then as I got going, I was like, okay, I'm pretty good at this. So I've been playing ever since. And my dad's been my coach ever since I got into high school. Always defense? Um, no, I, I used to play offense. I was a running back uh, for the longest. And then I moved to defense probably around like seventh, eighth grade. And then I started getting into DB training and like try to get the technique down. Um, you know, when you first start being a DB, it's kind of like, okay, how do I get in the stands? How do I backpedal? How do I break? So... Well, obviously very quick because you ran track, you did long jump, you state champion right. in football and long jump and then in the relays as well. Yeah. How did you balance both? Um, you know, there are two different seasons, but I feel like trying to stay in shape and I feel like track was the best thing to do. And I've been running track for a long time as well. Like I started track when I was in what, seventh, seventh. No, when I was in seven years old. Um, so I would do that. I would do football, then track, football, whatever. So every, when I got into high school, I was like, okay, why not just keep going until I get into college? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Who had the foresight to move you from running back to safety? Because obviously, uh, you know, running backs are getting disrespected all over the league right now. So you wouldn't <laughs> be getting money right there. But who had the foresight? Or did you choose to move yourself? Honestly, it was just like um, just information from people like, you know, Running backs don't really last that long, things in that sort, like getting to that point. And plus, it was getting to that, transiting to high school. So I was like, all right, so let me find a position. And then my dad also played corner. So he was like, all right, I feel like you would be a good DB, no matter if I was playing safety or corner. So I just got into it after that. So Notice your dad, you, you mentioned your dad played corner, played at Grambling yeah. here in Louisiana, Grambling State. Um, what did he tell you about Grambling, or what do you know about Grambling? Because obviously a historical university, a historical program, uh, the great Eddie Robinson and many, many great players, Doug Williams, of course, Shaq Harris, guys who came through there. Um, we didn't, I haven't really like talked about like the history of it or like what's, or what's the even reason why you even went to Grambling. But, you know, he just told me like the little things that 
when he got to college, the the bad things that he did or the things that he felt like he should have did better. Um, we didn't really go into deep like that, but I, but that is something that I should bring up uh, after this, for real. Yeah, because I'm going to assume he played for Coach Rob, huh? Um, he had to play for Eddie, huh? I'm not going to lie. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 but... I'll, I'll ask him for sure. Hey, yeah, you got to dig into this. Yeah, man. I got to. Yeah. You got to do some digging there. Right. Uh, <laughs> so when you said your, your your cousins and everyone had to play a sport or pretty much played the sport, did anybody else kind of break through and make it big or, you know, major college or anything like that? Uh, no. Uh, everybody always got into, like, high school and then, like, didn't really – didn't really carry on after that. Um, I was pretty much really the only one. But, I mean, there's obviously, like, there's some cousins that I'm not really close with that also have made it, that have been in the league, a co- like, for a couple years. But, like, it wasn't uh, the cousins I've been around. So, When did you know this is for me? I can I can make a living out of this. I can I can get to the highest level of this. Um, so when I was, like, playing Little League, uh, I, was, I was playing both sides, offense and defense. And... I would dominate on both sides of the ball, and we would go. We had went to it was uh, AYF championship. We still travel all the way to Florida because we had one in our little area, so everybody would get to go to like Florida. It's like the little league that everybody go to when you win in your little area. And I remember playing a couple teams from like different states, and then like I remember a coach telling me after the game like, "See you in the NFL." And then like since then, like I've never. I was like, okay, like maybe I am pretty good at this, you know. Like ever since then, I've never forgot that when a coach told me that um, after we shook hands, it was like thirty four zero. I remember, it, so yeah, <laughs> thirty four zero like last Sunday. Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> so here's a question: How do you end up at Minnesota? Um, so when Uni- I, University of Minnesota, folks. Oh, he's University very of Minnesota. Different from <laughs> you were out there for a while, yeah. even Vegas. So. Right. Um. So this goes into high school when I was going to a school, Vista Marietta, and which I was talking about when I moved, um, the school I was going to wasn't putting me in the right position to graduate, so I had to figure out what to do. I was behind on credits uh, to graduate because I had did homeschool my eighth grade year, and then when I was transferring into high school, it just didn't transfer over correctly or whatever, so I was already behind, so they jumped me into 10th grade. So, like, I had to make, I was trying to make up freshman freshman year classes and trying to do the same year classes as well. So I was doing summer school every summer, and then they put me in summer classes that didn't count for NCAA. So I basically wasted two of my summers. Who? how mad were you? Oh, what? I, I mean, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't really show, like, emotions like that. But at the time, I didn't, I was just doing what I had to do, you know, just to graduate. And it was very frustrating on me and my, my family. So... We had came with a solution like, okay, maybe I should move states because in California you can take seven classes. And then when I in Las Vegas, I was able to take eight classes. So I did all that. So I moved up there, but my family stayed back. So I had moved wow. in with uh, my cousin and his family, um, did all that. Um, actually, I appreciate them for letting me do that. You know, I've been in there for eight years. So be able to travel to, I actually would take the bus to school every day and stuff like that in Vegas because I had to. That was the only way I was going to get the class or whatever. So basically when I got up there, I ended up getting all A's both first and second semester. Um, but I still didn't have any offers or anything because of the transcript. Like if you really, if you were a coach and you looked at the transcript, you'd be like, oh, yeah, like this is mm-hmm. maybe he doesn't take school seriously. But it wasn't it was nothing like that. Like I was always I would always go to class and stuff like that. I always do my work. It was just it just looked terrible. And I and I understood. But at the same time, it was frustrating. But at the time being, I was like, OK, let me at least just graduate. So that's why I got into track and I ended up going to state for that. And I remember it was like end of March, beginning of April. Uh, coach had came to see me, worked me out a little bit or whatever, and then try to see how I moved. And then right before I gra- like right before I graduated from high school, it was like end of May. Uh, they had gave me a preferred walk on, so it was even though it was late, but it was still a blessing. And like now I look at the journey and what I've went through, and now I'm here. So it was it was a crazy frustrating journey, but like I stuck through it though. So that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That is something. So now you rewind and when you look back. And now, you know, you're, you're a fifth-round pick of the Saints and you're on the roster. Do you look at that journey and say, you know, good grief, you know, or was there any point in it where you got frustrated and said, you know what, man, I, I don't know if this is going to be for me? Right. Um, there's, there's, a, there's always a couple days. There was a days here and there I was just like, dang, like, should I be, like, is this going to be good for me? Like, should I keep doing this? Should like, I keep is it fighting? Worth it? Is it yeah. Because wor- yeah. I was literally, I would wake up, 
so early just to catch the bus to go to school. And school started at 7.15, so you could imagine. And you, I don't know if you guys have been around Vegas. It's a big circle. Mm -hmm. And yeah. to get to point A to point B, especially to school, traffic in the morning, um, it takes a long time to get over there. So it was a lot, And but one thing about me, like I always know how to stick through things. Like I would never complain, um, just grind it out, and now like look at where I am at. So Yeah, you know. and you stayed at Minnesota the yeah. whole time. I mean, it was during a, a period where a lot of people transferred. You know, you got an extra year with COVID. Right. Why did you stay? I mean, why was that the place for you? Honestly, like Minnesota is it's it's a de developmental program. Um they get you right in all aspects of life. Uh, I feel like they made me to the man I am now, like what to expect from uh, out the outside world, what to not listen to, what to do, how to how to treat people, you know, like just serve and give as well. I feel like that's the biggest thing there like they try to put out to us. Um and I feel like that's the big, the biggest thing I took away from there. And they also, of course, they also get us right for football. Mm -hmm. But besides that, outside of football, they get us right in like going to the hospitals, giving back. Think about what other people, what other people have, and what you have. You know, just being thankful for what you're doing. So, pretty much. I'm sure the consistency was nice too. After exactly. everything you had to to go through. Right. When you were in your draft process, what kind of conversations were you having with different teams? I mean, did you? know you were going to get drafted you have a good idea of how high or, or where um so like at the end of the season um i didn't really know uh because they would probably say like sixth seventh or undrafted and i was like okay like in my head i didn't it didn't really matter to me like as long as i get my name called or somebody called me or whatever so in in the biggest word around going around was like i'm too slow like i'm gonna run slow and so with my After all that track you did right <laughs> it, you know and that's what i'm saying so but like i said i don't listen to none of that so i just kept grinding kept grinding I was, me and my trainer were just working on my explosiveness just working on my speed and stuff like that and then when i got to the combine um i feel like the 40 was the biggest thing that i we were like we're like not worried about just big thing that we were just looking for and then when i hit that four four and i was like okay like that's what that's what the team needed to see and i feel like after that they were like okay so he can run and they see like I can play everywhere around the f on the field, so I feel like that bumped me up. Because um, mm -hmm. in the beginning, I I knew teams liked me, but they didn't probably think I was like a high. My name was that high compared to the other DBs. So. Now, now here is my issue with the combine: you go and run a four four. <laughs> but why do you have to? Because the film does not lie. Right. So I'm sure you ran fast on film playing. Right. So did you kind of look at it like you know? I, yeah, I understand. I need to prove it, but Hey, look at the film. You got to think about it. People always are trying to find something about about someone that's going to put a, put you in a negative. They're always going to try to find something that's going to make them not pick you. So that's basically what it was cuz I've never did anything bad in college. So they couldn't say anything about that. I had good grades, like it was it wasn't it was always it was always that something they have to find. So that's basically what it really was. How has the transition to the NFL been for you? Um, I feel like it's been pretty exciting. Uh, actually, just first, just moving to this side of the, of the states. You know, I've never been over here for really for real. Um, I feel like that was one thing. Like like I said, I've been to ocean weather, dry heat, then went to very cold. Yeah. Now I'm in humid. So I feel like I've lived in every climate, pretty much. <laughs> you know, but you know, it's been exciting. Like to be around the guys, being around people that you see that be playing on TV for years, and just seeing what they do and just listening to their advice. I feel like that's been the biggest thing. And actually getting my own house, car, mm -hmm. I feel like that's been the most exciting thing. So, How much of a sponge did you have to be to play for the Saints? Because they obviously started you in several positions, and you know it's asking a lot of a rookie to come in and not just learn a position, but to learn several. Um, I'm not gonna, it, it's not easy. Um, that's why I always come in early, try to get with my coach. Okay, like what is what is it that I have to work on? What is it? What do I need to do better than I did last week? Um, I feel like there's always something to be better at each week. Um, I feel like that's the best thing. And then being around like Tyron, May, Lat, even even uh, Tay, uh, just asking them like, okay, what you when you guys first got in the league, like what what would you do? What were you thinking? Like, you know, things and that sort. Just things that, like help me, you know, not to be worried or to be constantly thinking out there because you know how it is when you first go out there you're okay like you don't want to mess up and 
I feel like as the week's gone on, I'm like, okay, like just calm down, just play by play. And if I do something wrong, just forget about it. And then we'll work on it like the next couple of days. So. Uh, well, I think that's one of the things they say they like about you is that you move on to the next play. But you, a, a, a lot of teams, you know, fifth round pick, you're not necessarily expecting high things out of them. And yet you've, you've moved into the lineup fairly quickly and not just moved into the lineup, but into a position where, you know, when Marcus May was out, you were starting. So, you know, when did you feel like I can do this on this level in an NFL game and be an impact? Um, I feel like that started with the preparation, you know, everything that led up to that situation. Um, Cause I feel like you can't just wake up one day and be like, all right, I got it. Um, it it's a whole process and you got to trust it and just believe in yourself. That's pretty much all you can do for real. So. I know you made a comment about watching Tyron Matthew when you were growing up and just kind of how in awe you were that you were in the same locker room with him now. Has that, that settled in? You're good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, it settled. I mean, like, at first you're like, oh, okay, like, there he is. But, you know, he he's a person as well, too. Yeah. You know, he's just, just been playing for a long time. So um, he's a cool dude. Uh, we talk all the time, well, especially on and off the field. Um, and it's just good to know new people, you know, especially, like I said, they've been playing for a long time. So... Has he given you much, I guess, life advice? Because Tyra has been through a lot, right. to say the least. Or, or you know, have you gotten to that point in the relationship yet? Because, you know, again, he, he, he was at LSU and that didn't end so well. And I think a lot of people thought that Tyron might not even get to the NFL. Right. And yet he's been an all-pro and now he's playing for his hometown team. You know, everybody has their story. Everybody has their, their way they get, try to at least try to get to the top. And I try not to... You know, like, hey, like, get into people's business or anything like that because everybody has their own little way into where they is now. And I feel like that goes with me, even though, like, it probably not be the same thing. It's just, like, I we all found a way to get through it and and look at them now, so. Yeah, now, so now you're getting through the hand. You know, folks, everybody knows, you know, <laughs> while the Saints, follow the Saints uh, injury report, Jordan's had the injured finger. Right. And he's got the brace on his hand right now. Um, so, so one, how's the finger? Number one, obviously it's doing pretty good because you're back on the field, but how's, how is it, when is it going to be back to the, the, what you're expecting or are accustomed to? Um, I feel like this is going on with week three now. So probably like three more weeks, I would say to where like, I don't really have to wear a big hard cast, um, out there. Um, like I just got to trust the process with them in the training room. Um, me just being patient and doing all the exercises that I'm, I'm supposed to do so I can be able to get out there and so I can be back to where it was. Um, it's, I'm trying to get it extended and try to get it all the way down while making a fist, but she, the lady said that it takes a, it takes a little time. So how hard is it to play with that cast, like the big hard cast? Is, have you ever had to do that before? Have no, you had an injury like that? I've never like had any. Like of all the years I've played like football, I've never had. First, I've never broke anything, and then to wear a cast, like mm -hmm. it, it's. I feel like it's just a, to me. It was just like a challenge. Okay, like how do I overcome this challenge? What is how can I use it to my advantage when I'm out there? So that's pretty much how I've been looking at it. Okay, now you come up with the assist on the pick, but you know you don't get the pick. <laughs> Are you just do you tell people, hey man, if I had this cast on, now I could have you know that would have been mine. Uh, nah, I, <laughs> I, 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 hey, it is what it like just to make a play for the defense, you know. <laughs> Just actually to see uh, Pete get his first pick, um, excited for him. Shout out to Pete. Uh, like I said, it, it's never oh me me me. I'm always whatever helps the team to win. So, how meaningful for the unit to get a shutout because NFL shutouts are hard. Right. Now I know the Saints have three in the last 36 games, but NFL shutouts just don't come around very often. It, you know, you play in another professional team that prepares. Right. So how meaningful was it? Uh, you know, it meant a lot, you know, especially to be part of the, the group to make a shutout, you know, and it starts with the D-line, the linebackers to the DBs, so it's a collective, and then you got special teams and you got the offense, you know, and just for us to go out there and go all the way over there to go to a, to a team that's, especially in a, an environment that's, you know, hard to win out there and stuff like that, and to go out there and do what we know we're capable of doing, uh, it's pretty special, so. Kind of talked about getting on the field and feeling comfortable and being versatile, but how cool has it been to be in some of these venues and some of these stadiums for the first time? Man, you, cause you know what's crazy? Like, the only stadium I've ever been to, 
like growing up was uh, Quantum, you know, because okay, I, yeah, yeah. I used to be a Charger, Chargers fan. Terrible. I'm from San Diego. Oh, God, that was oh, such okay. a horrible stadium. Hey, chill, you know, chill. Murphy, man. Oh, okay. my goodness. You got to look past that, man. <laughs> but, like, for now to be at a different stadium, even coming to this stadium, I was like, like the Superdome, I was like, mm. man, like, this is huge. But uh, it's a cool experience, you know? Like, a lot of people don't get to experience that. And for you to actually be be able to play the sport you love and to be able to travel and see different things. Um, I feel like that's pretty cool. So, Any games that you're looking forward to still on the remainder of the season? Uh, the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you're not a rookie anymore. You know the right answer. <laughs> not looking ahead. Well, what is it going to take against the, the Houston Texans? And I'm sure you're very familiar with C.J. Stroud. Um, You know, like I said, it just, it just like any other team, we got to – do do us, you know, try not to let people get into our heads. It's just play football, play our style, play our way, and go out there and dominate and have fun. So I feel like that's pretty much it to really just to go out there and have fun and play. Yeah. Now, when you say not let people get into your heads, they can get into your head either way, either too much good or too much bad. How do you even kill it? I guess especially after the kind of game you guys just had because, you know, now everybody wants to, you know, compare this to the greatest defense of all time. And you got another game to play this week. You have a game to play, you know. On Thursday, right. Yeah. And yeah. Well, you'll be playing two games in five days when you count Sunday. Um, I feel like you just, you just be yourself, you know, go out there and celebrate with your teammates, not by yourself or towards other people. I feel like that's what they be looking for. So um, that's why we say when we make a play, everybody come together and celebrate and not just leave them by, by himself because a ref might get mistaken of him celebrating – or like taunting a, another the opposite team's <laughs> player. So I feel like if people come together, then it's, it makes it easier on us, you know. And, and, it's, and it's fun to celebrate with your, with your teammates. So, yeah. I mean, I hate to look ahead, and yet I'm going to look ahead. Because we just mentioned the two okay. games in five days. H have you ever done something like that before? No, never. Uh, that's why I was asking. I was like, okay, so right <laughs> after the game, do we have practice the next day? Or like, uh, I've never. I mean, it's going to be a walkthrough now. So you won't, it won't be a practice practice. Right. You guys are just going to be walking through. Mm -hmm. But still, it's a lot on the body. Exactly. Because I was like, there's no way we come out of a full-blown game and then like, the next day come into a full practice. So um, looking forward to that too as well. Uh, something new, like I said, new challenge. Yeah, welcome to the NFL. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What's been different um, or surprised you at this level? Ah, man, that's a, that's a good question. Um, honestly, what surprises me, man? I feel like just the amount of time you're here, um, I know, because in college it's different. Like, you have class and all right. that stuff. So, like, you kind of got to get out the facility. But you're here like a regular job. So, we're here from, like, 7 to 7 to 5. Um, I feel like that's been the biggest thing coming mm -hmm. home. Like, damn, I am kind of tired, low key, <laughs> you know. But uh, just trying to get used to that and paying for my own bills and stuff like that. I feel like that has been the biggest thing, like, now that I'm on my own, I make sure I pay everything on time. I feel like that's been like the most, you know, I, no, because I, it, it's different. draft, man. No, right. <laughs> but it's, yeah, yeah, think about it. It's, it's new, so it's yeah. something I got to make sure that I have in my head as well at the same time. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny to think about it. But yeah, when, you know, I got out of college and I had my first job and all those things that I had to do, right. yeah, it's a lot to have to deal exactly. with. Exactly. <laughs> I'm old, so you know, <laughs> you know auto draft is the key to life. Man. Yeah, auto draft is the key to life for me. Right. But I understand. I totally understand. <laughs> what do you do when you do have a little free time? What do you like to do? So I I play the game or I watch shows. Um, I don't really go out like that for real. I mean, I feel like there's nothing really for me to do, but I do experience like some some eating spots out here. I do have a couple cousins, so they take me sometimes mm -hmm. to like experience a couple of places here and there. So pretty much. Cousins who live here? Yeah, um, I have a couple of cousins I've grown and lived here, and but they do come to visit uh, in San Diego as well. So like that's how I'm like, oh, so I do got some people out there, and my sister works for um, the operations here. That's so, right, I yeah. heard about that. Yeah. What's her name? Cassidy Howden. Okay, Is she enjoying it. Yeah, she enjoys it. So yeah. now she's living. I guess I'm assuming you guys are kind of cohabitating, or uh, uh, wait, wait. 
What does that mean? Okay. Living. Together. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, I had to make sure. That was, yeah, that was kind of a big no, word no, now. No, 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 no. We're not getting weird. <laughs> We're not getting weird. <laughs> nah, nah, nothing like that. She has her own place because she still goes to school too. So she has her own thing going on. But I do see her some, uh, here and there. So she has time. So. Oh, wait. So how did that happen timing wise? Was she already here? Yeah, she was already working here like, was it two years last year? Something like that. So she was already here. Oh. Um, it was just so happy just for me to come here. She was like, you know, all happy and stuff. So. Yes. Oh, man, that's a divine providence right, right there. Yeah. What school is she in? Uh, enrolled in LSU. Oh, okay. So her, so my dad was at Gremlin. That he had kids mm-hmm. up here, so yeah. they're from over here. So that's why it's a coincidence. I'm like, okay, I get to see them more. Yeah. Than that I used to growing up. So. Yeah. So how familiar were you with Louisiana before you came here? Nothing really. I didn't know anything about it. Or, I just know about the culture. That's it. But I didn't know anything. Or what, it, what it was going to look like. Well, what, so you can read like, about the culture, but you don't know what it is until you get into no, it. No, facts. That, and that's, with, <laughs> that's with anything. I feel like yeah. once you experience yourself, then you're able to mm-hmm. put it in your own definition or how you explain it, like things of that sort. So. Okay, so what's been the oddest thing that you've seen around here? Because folks, folks around here will, I mean, they'll party for anything now. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a proven fact that, you know, we'll second line around here. It, 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 it doesn't matter. Oh, downtown be lit <laughs> because I, you know, staying in the Lowe's hotel, you know, yeah, you hear right everything there. outside. So yeah. A bunch of people in bikes and stuff. I'm just like, oh, so it get lit down here, huh? So that's something different and new yeah. that I had to get used to. I was like, okay, this is pretty cool huh, over here. Yeah, it's a little different than Minnesota, I'm sure. Oh, trust me, it's a lot different. Vegas right? Strip, though. Oh, yeah, see, that's different. But like living on the strip, you yeah. know, if you live on the strip, you have money. It, it costs a lot to live on this the This is true. So. <laughs> true. And you know what you're in for. Like, exactly. You know what you're, you're expecting. Yeah. yeah. So. You never know what you're going to get if you go to Bourbon Street here. I haven't. I actually have. I still haven't been over there yet. So I got to gotta go over there. I was about to say don't go. But you know what? I, I'm, <laughs> I was about to say don't go. But you know what? We want your tourism dollars. So yeah, go. Go. <laughs> go. go. Wait till the off season. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Then I'll do that. <laughs> well, I appreciate you joining us on the podcast today. Uh, thank you for having me. So. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to watch you play and good luck this weekend. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.